A new type of movie villain is cashing in at the box office. Contagion was number one in its opening weekend. And the people who've seen this terrifying story of a global virus are not walking out saying it's just a movie. On day one, there were two people, and then four, and then 16. In three months, it's a billion. That's where we're headed. Most scary movies, uh, you've got a monster. This is something that you can't even see. Honey? Uh, no, 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 uh, 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 stay there, Clark. The boogeyman is, uh, you know, viruses. The boogeyman is disease. It's quite possible you come in contact with an infectious disease and that you're highly contagious. Don't talk to anyone, don't touch anyone. It's just as scary as something, you know, you would see with vampires or something, except uh, it, I think it's even more because it's real, so I think it's one of the scariest films that came out since so year. <laughs> Everyone coughing in the, in the movie theater, I thought it was, probably wasn't a good idea to cough. The average person touches their face three to five times every waking minute. In between, we're touching doorknobs, water fountains, and each other. Definitely creeped out. Definitely conscious of walking out the theater and touching the door and holding it open for other people, uh, where if who opened it for me and who I was opening it for. We were in the ladies' room just now, kind of teasing about scrubbing up like surgeons. It's a scary movie because it makes the possibility of a worldwide contagion that would kill millions and millions of people extremely plausible. It will absolutely stay with me. Jory, don't touch anything. Help me. It was a plague. I mean, we just witnessed a plague. Oh, the Centers for Disease Control worked very closely with the filmmakers to make this pandemic as real as possible. Could it actually happen, though? For that answer, we turn to the director of the CDC, Dr. Thomas Frieden. Good to have you with us this morning. Uh, give us a reality check. How plausible is a scenario like the one that plays out in the film? Actually, it is quite plausible. We're all connected by the air we breathe, by the food we eat, by the water we drink. And in fact, CDC and our partners identify about one new pathogen each year. We investigate about one new one each day, one new investigation each day. So something like this can happen, and even in our own lifetime, if you think about HIV, more than 25 million people have already been killed by HIV around the world. Mm -hmm. And then we think of things like SARS too, which, which seem to spread very quickly. Um, it's a little unnerving though to hear you say, yes, this is absolutely plausible. Um, you say you, you look at these things, you prepare for them. Could something though really, say starting tomorrow, spread that quickly? It's possible for things to spread very fast. Take uh, just an example, the measles virus. Without vaccination, measles, each person with measles infects about 15 other people. One person with measles can infect someone who's 100 feet away. And it's possible even that someone who had measles leaves a place and four hours later someone gets in and gets infected. Wow. So sure, this is possible, but what's important is that we can do a lot to prevent it, mm -hmm. to reduce the impact as well. So when you, when you were approached um, by the filmmakers for consulting on the film to make sure they really wanted to make this as real as possible, um, when you see the final product, which as we mentioned you've seen twice, do you look at this as an opportunity to teach people or do you think it's it sort of stoked more fear in people, as we heard from some of the moviegoers? I think it's important that people understand that there are people at the local, state, federal, and global lev levels who are working to track what's happening so that we can prevent this from happening. There basically are a few things that we do in public health. We detect signals so that we can identify soon when a new pathogen is emerging. We figure out the laboratory aspects of it. What is it? How does it spread? And we figure out how it acts in people, so the, what's called the epidemiology of it, and then we figure out how to control it. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't say that we can control everything, but we can say that we can always be better prepared today than we were yesterday and better prepared tomorrow than we were today. The challenge in the, this country, really, is that over the past two years, about 45,000 jobs have been lost from local public health agencies. Those were many of the people who would detect and respond to an outbreak such as this one. All right, well, we, we will continue to follow this. And of course, in, in the interim, I think people are going to be washing their hands and using a lot more hand sanitizer. Uh, Dr. Thomas Friedman, appreciate you being with us this morning. Thank you.